We're going to build a 10 by 8 Titan model. To build any other size in the Titan 800 range, the principle is the same, but involves longer or shorter bars and a different number of components to suit the length. The parts list at the beginning of the installation booklet will confirm the quantity required for your particular greenhouse size. You'll require the following tools. A 10mm nut spinner or spanner, crosshead screwdriver, long nose pliers are useful to assist the beading process, safety goggles and gloves are recommended for protection, step ladders, you must be experienced in working at height, if installing on too hard standing, a masonry drill and hacksaw, a shovel if installing onto soft ground. This greenhouse has PVC bar capping that is secured with several hundred screws, so I would advise the use of a battery-operated screwdriver. You may find a double cup suction lifter of use when handling glass. If you intend to install on soft ground, then you will need some ready-mix post-mix to secure the base anchors. Diagrams of each profile for reference can be found at the beginning of the booklet. Installation Side Frame Assembly Lay out the parts for the first side frame assembly, ensuring that the bolt channels of the glazing bars are facing skywards. You are viewing the assembly from the inside. Slide glazing beading into both beading channels of each glazing bar and push back down the bar to prevent stretching. Slide a bolt into each end of each glazing bar and an extra bolt into each bar that will receive a cantilever brace. The 10 by 8 Titan has one cantilever on each glazing bar. Fit the eaves gutter bar to the top of each glazing bar by pushing the bolts through the holes in the gutter. Make sure the glazing bar is pushed right up under the gutter. Remember if you're fitting an internal partition, you must leave one glazing bar out of the side frame assembly at the point where the partition will be installed. Attach the built-in base to the bottom of the glazing bars in the same way, but do not put a nut on the outer two bars until the two angle tie bars are fitted. The top of the end diagonal tie bars are not attached at this point. Make sure all glazing bars are tight to the bottom of the base section before tightening up. Greenhouses longer than 12 foot will have more angle tie bars and the base section will be in two pieces joined by corner brackets. For hard standing, slide additional bolts into the bolt channel of the base and fix an angle bracket, generally one every two feet. Slide an extra bolt at each end of the base to enable the corner bracket to be fixed later. Hard and soft standing. Repeat the same procedure for the other side frame assembly. Rear end assembly. Lay out the parts for the rear end assembly ensuring that the bolt channels of the glazing bars are facing skywards. Side corner bars are mitered at one end. Roof corner bars are mitered at both ends. Corner bars and end glazing bars are handed, so can be correctly identified here and with reference to the booklet. Roof corner bars have the letter R marked at the ridge end of the bar. The letter R is covered on powder coated models, so identification of the left and right hand corner bars is a bit more difficult. The hole at the ridge end of the corner bar is 50 mm from the end of the bar, as opposed to 33 mm at the eaves end of the same bar. You're viewing the assembly from the inside. Slide glazing beading into both beading channels of each glazing bar and into two of the three beading grooves in all four corner bars. The middle groove is only used if you have an internal partition.
secure the eaves and ridge gusset plates to each corner bar as shown here by inserting bolts into the facing bolt channel and the hole in the corner bar and then in turn the gusset plate. Slide one nut and bolt into the alternative bolt slot of both ends of all four corner bars and fingertip tighten approximately 50 millimeters from each end. Before fitting the end glazing bars, insert an extra bolt into the bolt channel to enable fixing of the long horizontal brace. Attach all the components together as shown. Ensure the long horizontal brace is fitted to the top bolt in the eaves gusset plate and the diagonal angle to the bottom hole of the gusset plate, keeping all nuts loose at this stage. Make sure the glazing bars are tight down to the built-in base sill. When you have fitted everything to the correct position, you can begin to tighten all the nuts. Starting at the ridge, ensure the gap behind the gusset plate is minimized before tightening and repeat the procedure behind both eaves gusset plates. Slide a nut and bolt into each end of the built-in base and an additional three if you're installing onto hard standing. Door End Assembly The door end is assembled in a similar manner to the rear end with a few exceptions. Lay the components out again, ensuring the bolt slots are facing up and the corner bars are in the correct orientation, the same as the rear end. Insert the beading to the corner bars and glazing bars as before. However, the inside edge of the glazing bar needs only approximately 50 millimeters of beading at the top for the glazing above the door. Assemble the corner bars in the same way as the rear end. The base section on the door end is in two parts rather than one, and the long glazing bars are longer than the equivalent rear glazing bars. And there are a slightly different profile, having two bolt channels on the inside face rather than one. Moving now to the bottom of the greenhouse, engage the bottom sill with the two built-in base sections by pushing the angle of the sill under the locator as shown. The door end glazing bar has two bolt channels. Slide two bolts into the channel closest to the corner bar at the bottom of each glazing bar, one bolt into the channel closest to the middle of the assembly, and three bolts into the bolt channel of the built-in base. If you're fitting the greenhouse on soft standing, then you need only one bolt in the base channel. If you're installing onto hard standing, attach an angle bracket to the middle bolt of the base. Attach the bottom bolts in the glazing bar to the bottom sill, but don't put the nut on yet. Attach the rectangular plate to the two bolts in the glazing bar and the closest bolt in the built-in base. Ensure that the glazing bar is right down to the sill. Attach the diagonal angle to the top bolt in the rectangular plate, then put the nuts on. Slide two bolts into the channel closest to the corner bar and one bolt into the channel closest to the middle of the assembly. The last bolt will attach the glazing bar and the corner bar together in the same way as at the rear end. The first bolt inserted into the channel closest to the corner bar will be used to secure the horizontal brace to the top bolt of the gusset plate. Now attach the main door track support to the first bolt in the glazing bar. Take care to fit the door track support the correct way up. The slots at the end should be open at the top, as shown. Now tighten all the nuts, ensuring that the gaps behind the gusset plates are tight.
Roof vent. Lay out the vent parts as shown. Identify the slam bar and attach two stay pins to the outer side of the angle using M4 nuts and bolts. If you're fitting an automatic roof vent, then ignore this instruction. Insert beading into the beading channel of the vent top rail and both side rails. Slide a bolt into each end of both side rails. Line up the holes in the top and bottom rails and tighten, ensuring the top and bottom rails are tight up to each side rail. Note the correct orientation of the components. Bolt channels of the side rails facing up, the notch part of the bottom rail facing up, and the hooked hinge of the top rail also facing up. This is being viewed from the inside. Fit the casement stay to the bottom rail using the M4 nuts and bolts. Stays are not needed if an automatic roof vent is fitted. Repeat for the other vents. Double Door Frame Assembly Identify the parts for the left-hand door as viewed from the outside. The right-hand post is a handed bar and has a bolt channel along the reverse. The left-hand post is a standard unhanded T-bar. Ensure that the door bar is positioned so that three holes are at the bottom and two holes at the top. The top door panel has the Elite label, the bottom panel has the door skid fitted. Insert glazing beading into the inside channel of both glazing bars. The doors must be fitted with glass as you build, so identify the correct glass panels from the size description in the booklet. Your greenhouse comes as standard with a lock, and one of the infill panels has a hole cut to receive the lock. We will fit the lock in the second panel down, but you could fit it lower if you wish. Fix the door together by screwing the self-tapping screws through the handed glazing bar, then in turn into the self-tapping screw groove in each glazing bar. A manual screwdriver or electric is acceptable. The lower infill panel interlocks with the bottom door panel as shown. Insert the glass, then fix the unhanded post to the door, ensuring that the glass is seated correctly. Or you can secure both posts and add panels and glass as you go. Fix the door wheels into place by pushing the long bolt provided through the center of the wheel, then through the hole in the top panel from underneath. Make sure the collar of the wheel is pressed against the top panel. Add the washer and locking wheel nut to the bolt and tighten. Turn the door over and slide the brush draft excluder into each bolt channel of the glazing bar. 
Add a nut and bolt to the bottom of the channel to prevent the brush from slipping down. Then cut the brush level with the top of the glazing bar. Door handles are fitted centrally to the panel of your choice. Offer the handle to the panel and mark the holes before drilling two holes 7 mm in diameter. The glass is clipped to the handed door post using a PVC strip. Cut to size and squeeze into the cavity as shown. The right hand door is fitted in the same way, however you have a door panel to take a lock. Position this panel at the desired height in the door and build the door in the same manner. The lock is fitted later. Assembly of Greenhouse Unit Lift the first side assembly into position by the rear end so that the gutters are on the outside. Slot the eaves gutter bar into the small space between the roof and side corner bar so that the gutter is outside the end frame and the two flanges that form the angle of the roof and side are inside and tight up against the bolt channels in the roof and side bar. Bolts that were inserted into each end of the corner bars will now be used to fix the subassemblies together. Line up the slots at the end of the eaves bar with the bolt channel in the roof corner bar and slide the bolt down before tightening. Do the same at the top of the side corner bar, but this time you must take the nut off completely to allow the side diagonal tie bar to attach. Moving to the bottom of the side corner bar, attach the side built-in base to the bottom of the side corner bar in the same way. Repeat for all four corners of the greenhouse. Moving to the ridge, insert beading into both sides of the ridge bar. Then fix to the top of the roof corner bars. The vertical part of the ridge will be outside and pointing skywards. To attach the ridge to the roof corner bars, use the bolts that were previously inserted into the top of each roof corner bar. Slacken the bolt and push up into the slot of the ridge and tighten. Insert glazing beading into both beading channels of all the roof glazing bars. Insert an extra bolt into the roof bars that will take a cantilever brace to match the side assembly. Cantilevers are also fitted across the ridge, so insert an extra bolt on each roof bar near the top. Also attach one extra bolt into the roof bars onto which the roof vents will fit. Consult the booklet for information regarding how many cantilevers and vents your greenhouse has to ensure the correct number of bolts are fitted. Attach the roof bars to the ridge and gutter bars. It's advisable for longer greenhouses to start at the middle to ensure the roof remains in square. You must ensure that each roof bar is tight up against the ridge and the gutter. Slide the vent into the ridge in the open position. Fit the slam bar to the previously inserted bolts in the same way as the vent. When you're happy that the roof vent opens and closes correctly, insert a black tube into the ridge bar 
on both sides, tight up against the vent top rail to prevent it moving. Insert a small screw into the tube to expand. Attach the cantilever braces to the previously inserted bolts across the gutter. Before tightening the nuts on the roof, you must ensure that there is no sag to the ridge or bow to the gutters. They must both be straight before you tighten. The roof canopy is usually supplied in several pieces, and when fitted together, they'll be longer than the ridge bar. Sit the canopy on top of the ridge and make sure the overhang at each end is the same. While in position, drill a 7mm hole into each end of each canopy and the ridge and secure with a nut and bolt. Insert the canopy seal to each side of the canopy. Soft Standing For installation on soft standing, you must dig out in each corner of the greenhouse and the base joint if the greenhouse is over 12 foot to enable the corner bracket to be fitted to the base. Fit the corner brackets to the unoccupied bolt at each end of the base section so that the end with four holes will be underground. Do not concrete until the greenhouse is squared up and fully glazed. Hard standing. Offer the end of the corner bracket to the base, mark and cut level with the bottom of the base then attach using the unoccupied bolt at each end of the base. Do not anchor the greenhouse to the hard floor until everything is squared up and fully glazed. Squaring up. Before glazing, it is important to ensure the greenhouse is squared up. Measure both diagonals on the floor from front left to back right, and then front right to back left to ensure both measurements are the same. If they're different, Gently push and pull the corner until square is achieved. Insert a pane of glass into each corner of the roof. The glass sits in a retaining lip on the gutter and also runs along the beading on the glazing bar and corner bar. You must ensure the glass runs parallel to the gutter and the corner bar. If it runs out, then the roof is out of square. If the roof is out of square, it's likely that either the ground is uneven or the roof bars are not fitted at 90 degrees to the gutter. If the ground is uneven, you must pack up to achieve square. Fitting the door. Slide three bolts into the bolt channel at the back of the top door track. Offer the door track to the door track support and line the bolts up with the three holes in the door track support. Loosely add a nut to each bolt. Check that the top door track is centrally positioned in relation to the greenhouse, then tighten. Line up the door wheel with the top door track and bottom door sill and slide across until the second wheel enters the top track. You might need to raise or lower the door track support to achieve the correct height. Repeat for the second door so that the handed door posts meet as the doors close. When you're happy that the doors are correct, bead the short glazing bar, then fit it above the door to the remaining slot in the door track support and the central hole of the ridge gusset plate. Finally, each end of the top door track is supported by a vertical angle section. Fix the vertical angle support to the bolt channel at the back of the top door track and move the support left or right until the hole at the bottom lines up with the self-tapping screw groove in the side corner bar, secure with a screw. Fitting the lock and keep. Undo the ring nut from the lock barrel. Insert the barrel through the hole in the door panel from the outside, then reapply the ring bolt and tighten. Attach the washer, then the cam lever and screw to the inside, ensuring the cam moves in the correct direction to lock when the key is turned. Using the half-headed bolts provided with the door fitting, fit the domed pin to the right-hand post of the left-hand door. Raise or lower the keep to match the height of the cam. Fitting the ramp. Engage the C section of the ramp to the knob on the door end sill. Rotate the ramp to horizontal and screw down when the greenhouse is anchored to the floor by drilling a small hole at each end of the ramp. 
For soft ground, you should fit a solid product under the door end sill to enable fixing. 10 Blade Louver Lay out the parts and keep the handles on the right hand side viewed from inside. Secure the top sill and bottom to the side jams using self tapping screws. Make sure the sill is fitted to enable the louver clips to open and close freely. Fit any glass required under the louver, then slide the louver into position. Insert half-headed bolts to the glazing bars, and before adding the nut, loosely fit the small fixing bracket, then tighten. Glazing. Starting with the roof, it is essential that you add the PVC bar capping to each roof pane as you go along. Each roof piece, except where there's a vent, must have a roof spacer fitted. This can be found in the packs of small glass shapes. Fit the spacer and offer the pane to the roof in the correct position. Insert the wire clips as shown. Some of the glass sizes are similar, so be careful to select the correct piece as detailed in the booklet. Measure and cut the bar capping to the correct length. The half capping has a rubber fin on one side of the bar. The fin goes to the glass side of the bar. Secure with color-coded capping screws. Side glass is fitted in a similar way. However, you must slide the glass under the gutter before pushing it into place at the bottom. The gable glass is also fitted in a similar manner to the rest of the greenhouse. When you have two pieces of glass joining together, you must use a muntin strip. Measure and cut to length and apply to the top of the bottom pane before adding the top pane. The capping on the gable bars can be mitered to follow the angle of the bar. The unhanded parts of the door are best capped by cutting around each door panel. Anchoring down, equally space the angle brackets previously fitted around the greenhouse. Mark the floor, then drill, plug and screw down. Nut covers and canopy plate. Nut covers are available for painted models. They just push on to give a great finish. The canopy plate has three holes. Slide a long bolt into the external bolt channel of the center glazing bar on both ends and fit the canopy plate to this, but do not tighten. Using a long self-tapping screw, attach the two top holes in the plate to the screw grooves in the canopy extrusion and tighten. Your greenhouse is now complete. You can find individual videos that cover automatic roof and louver vent installation, bar capping, toughened and horticultural glass fitting, shelving, staging, assembly of a five-bladed louver, rainwater kit and how to attach tying eyes into the roof.